everyone, and welcome back to the last episode of season one of the off season podcast. Um, it's been a fun off season. Hopefully, this podcast has made it more enjoyable for you. Uh, the disappearance of the off season only means one thing, which is the reappearance of debate night next right. week. It's back. The Clash of the Titans uh, comes back next week. New faces. I don't know a if there'll be any new, new faces. faces next week, but a lot of new faces throughout the year. A lot of new topics, some new formats, some new rules, all kinds of stuff. So uh, you're going to want to pay attention next week. Debate night will be back, and then the off season will be back. Well, next off season. So um, this is we're just going to do winner takes all on the the game today. Like season Ooh. one champ, whoever yeah, season wins. one champ. Because I don't know, this, I don't, I don't know, I it's don't been know pretty the even. Uh, standings. It's so. been pretty even, honestly. I feel like Trevor is winning, but you know, yeah, I feel like I've, only, I feel like I've done really well, but for Brody's some reason, I've only won once. Yeah. yeah, I think Brody's only won once, but we're throwing even all that out the, the pe- window. The people might think I am day. actually winning. I, yeah, I kind of yeah, thought no, you were too. Brody's had more. I think I've only won once. I think Brody's had more guesses within one of the right answer. Yeah, but Trevor's won more because then Brody yeah. will just have like like last week. I think you were, your last one you were just seventy off. Yeah, I'm a four. And you just threw your whole lead away. I'm a second half team. Yeah, yeah. Trevor's just Trevor just waits for the fourth quarter and then then comes back. But we're gonna kick this off with we're actually gonna do a double story off the top because to be oh. honest with you, I think they're kind of similar and I thought it'd be more fun just to have a double story, double story. off the deck. So we're going to start it with gonna Zach read like Lamb. one sentence from one and then one sentence from the other and go back <laughs> no, and forth. I was just going to read one story and then just go into the second story. Oh, okay. okay. That's, that was I, my plan. I didn't really see, yeah, it's not really a double story. I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say that like they were two, the same story from two different perspectives and they just happened to get submitted. <laughs> that would have yeah, been a then You, that you give us like <laughs> one, you give us like one perspective and then you go to the other and then you bounce back and yeah, forth. Like I don't Zach know. Says that. I don't know how I didn't think of this entire season to go in there under a fake name and submit something crazy like something crazy enough that hunter would be talking about it all week like guys you just can't wait to hear this story i, I don't do check it. it till like the morning of the show I, so. I promise i promise i didn't do that <laughs> but maybe for next year this first one is from tyler staub oh. from zach Lamb. <laughs> he said got a neat little new year's story uh he speaks in this as if he wrote it february or january 1st but he submitted it february 1st so i don't know if he forgot when new year's was but anyways doesn't really matter Mm. my buddy paul and i have been playing disc golf together for a few years and we've been hitting aces quite a bit more this year we both happened to be at about three aces each two months ago and we decided let's see who can get to five aces first a friendly little competition well we both snag one each around november december times we're both now sitting at four each which brings us to yesterday december 31st 2023 we decided to play Twin Creek slash Germantown and end the year off with a fun round. Well, I guess Paul really wanted to end the year off with his fifth ever ace and wanted to do so in front of me. His first backhand ace. It was beautiful, actually, and I was happy for him, but I basically witnessed him beating me out for that fifth ace. LOL, it was so bittersweet. Well, the next hole, I guess it was my turn. I aced it to get my fifth literally on the next pad. He beat me out by to get to five by one hole. But I thought it was cool and something we won't ever get to experience again. Back to back aces. Cheers to number five and a happy new year. How about it? Mm. Something about that. Happy uh, new year. Have you ever had a backhand and a forehand ace hunt? Have you had a forehand ace? I should be asking. Have I had a forehand? Ace? I had. I had the only one I had was with that starter set disc. At I don't think I've had a forehand ace. Wow. I've had some forehand throw ins, but I don't think I've ever had a forehand ace. Sounds no. like a new video series, if not, you ask me. Not in the forehand ace club. That is kind of surprising. Yeah, no, I don't remember a forehand ace. Wow. So still out there. That might you. be my next maybe a live stream. I got the whole three until I ace with a forehand. There you go. Ooh. Check it off. Check. But that's not that's not really an ace though. That's fair. I'll go yeah. to hole four. Hole four peaks you forehand ace. No, Skip I, shot up. I mean hill like I, I mean I mostly mean like if you throw it over and over again, it's not really an ace. That's, that's awesome that is true. That's awesome yeah. I'll just go play did some forehand say, only rounds. Well, you how, did show some concern with Connor's A situation on hole three at Peaksview. Well, but the the thing about Connor's like the ace challenge is like we all threw it under those same circumstances. Like that's what it's compared to. Like yeah. that. So he, it's not. He thinks it's a he thinks it's a captain's raptor, and there might be oh. there might be a shipment of twenty five captains raptors coming at some point for Connor to go out there. The wind up that hill, man. He's never he's never going with the Heiser angle. It scares him. It scares him. <laughs> thing gets on Heiser, it's gone. He's too scared of it. <laughs> well, now here's a question: If I were to let's say I was doing I were to do an Ace live stream, 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just went to Peaks View and instead of parking on one hole, I just went through the course over and over and over until yeah, I aced. Totally Does counts. Does that yeah. count as a legitimate oh, ace? 100%. Yeah, wait, how why could would you that dispute not? It? How, how could you dispute it? Wait, it's a round of like, disc golf. It's like my fifth playthrough. And it's a round of disc golf, though. It's still it's around. What are you just, talking I, about? I, I, this is a question. He's just clearing out the it facts. It doesn't count. if it's. It doesn't have to be your first round of the day to count as an ace. I just didn't know like, if it's your 10th round of the day. It, it, for, no, me, for me, for it to be a legitimate ace, there's no shot you're doing it. Your for me round, to be a legitimate yeah. ace, it has to be your first shot no, on that tee, and it needs to be during just like a standard, not standard round of disc golf, like, but like you have to be playing the the course like normally, like, and it can be a nine hole round, like that's fine if it's a nine hole course, like, whatever. Okay, but, what if I what if I went so to you PC could do Lynchburg a three hole loop. But see, that's not how the course is meant to be played. Like, if you went to a nine-hole course like Lynchburg College yeah. and you aced during a nine-hole round, that that's fine. You played the course as mm -hmm. it was intended. So what and if I, think I even what if I like played hole one, skipped hole two, played hole three, and then I aced hole three, and then I played the rest of the round out? Could be argued. Well, we have to we have to talk about that in court. Tough. We need all the we need all the facts. You know, we need to know where your heart was at too. My heart was but I'm going out here to ace. So but I think you. even if you like, if you, let's say like, uh, let's say like you miss a, your putt on hole three or something, and then you like grab another putter to putt it. No, and, uh, yeah, you no, scared that scared the count. crap out of me, Kelsey in the shadows. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> oh my gosh! Just a shadowy figure walking by me so slowly, so quietly. Oh, my heart is racing. Um, <laughs> gosh! Well, I can see you all that camo. Here, when we first showed up here, we haven't been back here in like uh, a month or so. And we first showed back, she swore the front door is unlocked. She's like, the front door is unlocked. She's like, there's a squatter inside. I'm like, what? Oh. So already on edge a little bit. But what I was saying is like, if you re-putted, if you're like, oh, that was a bad putt. And you like re-putted. And then a couple holes later, you ace. I think it still counts as yeah. an ace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if, you, if you're throwing of, extra shots here and there. there, well, it's more so like go get you the ace. Extra shots off the tee. Go get the ace and then come talk to me about how the round goes, and, how, and then we can decide as a committee. You know, does it count? We'll be we're the, the official committee. rate ace committee. So yeah. next next off season, we're just gonna be telling people, did your dude? Ace count? No, that's a funny segment. Next year, somebody reminded themselves. Um, I'll set a reminder. Like if we did, we have people submit their ace like uh, qualms or their inquiries. And, and basically we, say, like, the, was it an ace or not? And we will fun. decide. Or the judge and jury, on, yeah. did you actually ace? Correct. Well, this next one I do, is definitely an I do, actual ace. I will say I do appreciate all the comments that I see in posts and people tagging me when people just put a finger up next to the basket um, and claim that they ace. I do appreciate those because, yes, I, I need video proof. AK Robbie someone, said, Brody says you're a liar if you do that. There was someone who submitted for their uh, rating – like guess the rating and one With of the that, pictures I could have chosen was a, a ace picture. And I was like, I almost chose it, but I was like, I don't know. It doesn't have <laughs> enough context. So they gave me like five pictures to choose from. So I chose a different one. But uh, this next story is from disc golf grandpa. He said back in 1993, during a Minnesota summer tour event at Highland park in St. Paul on a Sunday, I aced my final hole of the day on hole 12 with a brand new end of a dolphin. The following Saturday, the I was playing the Minnesota Summer Tour event at Todd Park in Austin, and I aced my first hole of the day, number seven, with an end of a Viper. So back-to-back -back tournament aces just six days apart with several rounds in between. This happened in the 80s mm -hmm. for sure, the 90s, because it was some old uh, molds. Yeah. Yeah, 93. But that's that fascinating. Back-to-back -back tournament aces, just last one of one tournament, and then a week later, first day, first hole of the next tournament. Never had a tournament ace, but also I've played probably a total of, like, 12 tournaments you don't have enough tournaments in my life maybe yeah that's what i'm saying i would have a tournament ace if the baskets were pdj legal okay it was that, like a, that's, that's true it's a true statement that's so lame to what? say it was one of the it was it would have been my first ace ever and it would have been in a tournament it would have been electric it was this uh i was playing at some like farm course i forget what the tournament was but it was a pdj tournament on like this farm course and i threw a hyzer with a firebird on like one of the extra holes and it came into this like super old, just like backyard basket. And it came in dead center and just went straight through the chains, just right out the back. Cause there's only like one set of chains. They're like this far apart. And it just went straight through it. I had a drop in birdie, which I was excited about, but I was like, that should have been my first ace. We'll never know. More touch. Session. Yeah. More touch. More touch. I should have. That's what, that's what Climo wants. He wants more touch back in the game. So you can't be just throwing your stupid spike hyzers through the basket. Like 
Yeah. Gotta have touch. Gotta have touch. What is uh what's going through your guys' heads if you ace the first hole in a tournament? I'm just pumped about it. Uh although frankly, first thing going through my head is like that was really cool, but like I'd rather ace on the foundation channel. I, was, I think it, I'm oh, just okay. terrified for the rest of my round. Is that I was gonna say, is that the what? worst hole to ace? So. Obviously, no. hole 18 is the, no, be hole 18 have, is the, the best. best hole to ace. Yeah. 18 no, is the best hole. No, no for me, I have really, in tournaments, I'm the most like jittery and tense on like the first couple holes. So they would actually be very helpful for me. But because then the I, next oh. hole, you have all the pressure and what, you still what you, have the pressure. What the pressure? What are you talking about? What pressure? You well, just you, ace. It, you, like, I guess it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a good shot. After, it's a typical thing but, after you ace, you always follow it up with a bogey. Cause like, there's just no way about, well, let me tell you shot. how my tournaments usually go. I'm notorious for starting my tournaments, like bogey, double or double bogey, and then playing good from then on out. So if I can get it, if I can get two strokes under par right out the gate, I'm in a great spot compared to where I normally am. Even if I go, I, I if I go ace bogey, I'm fine. If I ace hole one, almost a guarantee over par round. No matter the course coming in, I was going to say, I wouldn't know. Like two ways, I wouldn't know. There's, there's two <laughs> ways to go about it. It's like you either, you either go where it's like, okay, you ace hole one. Now you're like, all right, I can play free. This round doesn't matter. I got an ace. Or you ace one, hole one and you're like, holy crap, this might be the greatest round of my life. And now you put yeah. all that pressure on no, it. I think it would actually help Wizard. me. But I, I think the best place I could get an ace would be like around hole like 11 or 12 because that's usually when you start feeling like you need to mount a, a comeback and you're like okay this round hasn't been great let's finish strong get it back together so like that could be the way you spark it you might need it i think hole one's the worst hole to ace for me it would probably be up there with the, some of the best holes i could ace just because of think, the way beginning of my rounds are not smooth they're usually very bumpy i feel like the the worst hole would be one and then i think the best holes would be nine or 18. I think both of those are, are good. I think 18 like, is not a great middle. Middle. Back I nine. think 18 is not a good hole to ace because you gain all that excitement and momentum and then it goes nowhere. But it's it not I don't necessarily over. think an ace gives you momentum. I think it gives you pressure. You gain two strokes under par. Of course it but does. It's like a, it's a pressure thing. Hey, I don't understand Hunter's this pressure thing. Guy. I don't understand Hunter's this pressure guy. thing. Birdies Wait, give you momentum. You how is it, explain to me how the aces give you pressure because I think I don't it's a good score. I don't believe in momentum. I don't believe in momentum. It sounds like Trevor doesn't believe in pressure, Hunter. No, I do like believe it. in pressure so much so that it debilitates like me. But I'm just saying I've never once ace and then felt pressure on the next hole. Well, like we've talked oh. about an ace, it wasn't really a good shot. Sometimes, likely. yeah. So what so, so so what you just blew a so, basket up with a bad shot. So you're already not throwing not, great. probably not a bad shot. Probably a shot that a was okay shot. not great. Yeah. A shot that a shot that probably wasn't gonna get you a bird. And I got so you're already not throwing the best shot possible. You weren't trying to throw that shot on hole one. So you already messed up. Then you set up the hole two, <laughs> but now you have the pressure of you have the box. And all these guys who threw better shots than you are behind you. That is and just like blank. that First is just three, not three, even three. remotely how I would think. I would think to myself, I like, I would think to myself, oh, that was a pretty good shot. I got to the basket. You just and have like adrenaline on the next tee, and you just like you're amped up so much energy, it just doesn't go well. That's why I'd like it like eight positive energy or like hole nine. You're just like in the monotony. You hit the wall. Boom. Ace. I'm back. Yeah, I agree. Middle of the round be I'm great. Already, but... I'm already alive on hole one and two's T. I don't need to be like juiced up. No, I, I, I like I'm thinking about the net value of the strokes under par, and it's going to give me a two stroke head start going into the round. You get two strokes no matter where you ace. Yes, but I need it at the beginning of my round. As I explained to you, my beginning of my rounds suck. I need a two-stroke head start in the first few holes. That would I think be we very need, helpful for me. I think we have to somehow make this happen. Just get Trevor to ace. I think we need, you have to play enough tournaments <laughs> you gonna, until you ace hole one. Yeah, and it's probably <laughs> going to see, help me we overall. Case study. We can just do a case study on your uh -huh. score on hole two and three if you ace hole one and if you don't and just see what happens. We'll just have him keep playing like flex. <laughs> because uh, I'm super consistent. It would be... Yeah. Perfect data. Flex starts out at Northwood Black. You ace hole one, and you end up shooting 27 over par. Like, I mean, clearly, Trevor, it did so, not work for you out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Acing is going to put me in a better mood. It's going to give me a stroke head start. Like, I am 100%, myself personally, am going to feel better acing on hole one than if I didn't. You also have the chance of the double H ace patch. That's true. Think about that. That might be the the most pressure. Got a lot of thing about the double. I mean, yeah, you double, you have the whole rest you, of the round. If you double ace, you ace one hand two. You might as well DNF. The rest of your round, <laughs> you're, you're Hunter gets an ace, dude. He's <laughs> out of there. He's driving off the course, bro. If you, ace, if you ace one and two, you're about to take a pen on hole three. If Hunter, like if Hunter gets an ace on holes one or two, he's like, guys, I'm about to blow. No, two's up, fine. Dude. 
Two's fine. If I birdie one and then I ace two, yeah. great. That's an awesome. If you spot. ace hole one, though, you're out of if there. If I ace hole one, I mean, I shouldn't even be in the tournament. Just pack it I'm up. Gonna be, I'm going to be Hunter, yeah. Hunter, Hunter's be putting way too much emphasis on the law of averages here. Just be like, I have to shoot a 10 now. Yeah, it just has yeah, to happen. I have to. I was going to go four or five. I can't go one, one, three. Oh my uh, gosh. Before we hop into the game today, which again is the season finale, the championship matchup here. Yes. Uh, before we hop Do people into that, still like this game? What's the situation? Where are the comments people looking love it. like? People this show is it? that right. game at this point. I get so many I, emails of people submitting because they want to be a part of this game. It's electric. Um, I must just get, I must just like feed off of the uh, the hate because I, I see some one person say they hate it and I just assume like, oh, everyone hates this game. Nah, people so it's love good to it. know that, that you don't have that hate, you don't like have uh, if you don't have haters, you're not successful. True, true. Okay. Tomorrow we are launching a brand new. I'm giving you a heads up here. Text deal. Uh, what, what would I want to call this program? We'll call it a program. So we'll tomorrow, program. tomorrow you'll be able to access used disc mystery boxes. Three used discs, fifteen dollars. The only way to be able to access that is through this brand new text deals program. But going forward, what it's basically going to be is once a week, every week on Wednesday, you're going to get a text with a weekly deal. These are going to be extremely limited deals. Um, they're going to be fire sales, like actual fire sales. And, you know, dude, that sales fire, uh, like hats, <laughs> discs, all <laughs> kinds of stuff just on extremely low prices. And how it works is basically you'll get a text to your phone. That'll be like these C line FD threes are twelve ninety nine for the next, you know, 24 hours. And you just respond back with how many you want. And boom, you have now purchased a C line FD three for a very limited amount of money. I don't know why this is so hard. I don't have a script in front of me and I'm just all over the place today. <laughs> this is like migraine hunter or fever hunter all over again. But anyways, text deal launches tomorrow. If you're interested in use this mystery box, you can uh, click the link in the description down below to sign up for that. And once a week, you'll just get a text with some flash sales, all kinds of sick discs, discounts, maybe even some limited edition discs. And if you're a Patreon member, you can sign up through the Patreon link and patrons will actually get one day early access to all these deals. Ooh. So if you want to make sure you get in on it, don't sign up with Ooh. the link here. Head over to patreon.com slash foundation disc golf. Use the link over there to sign up, put your number in, and then you'll get 24-hour early access to each weekly deal. So super exciting uh, new program and weekly deals coming, and that's the only way to get access to them. So you're not going to miss it out. Again, link in the description I mean, down below. I mean, that's incredible because, you know, I think majority of people – myself included, do most of our online shopping when we're on the can. And, uh, you know, there's a chance where you could just be taking care of business and you get a text and you're like, oh, yeah, that's a pretty good deal. And you just type in two because you're going number two and uh, boom, sale. Easy, easy. So job, think about that one. They had two Raptors coming before you even wipe. Now, will this, uh, work, for, <laughs> that's our will slogan. this work for... Yeah, <laughs> Will this work for Android and iPhone? Yes. Yeah. And Blackberries. And Blackberries. I don't think it works. I don't know about Motorola Razors, but we can Anything, try. Anything, yeah. Right. Uh, only well, US, U.S. only. That's the only thing. So. Shout out to our, all our international listeners. Yes. Unfortunately, you won't be able to take part in this. Sorry about that. All right. Let's get the first player up here, Sci Guy. The first picture. Kick off the grand the finale The championship. Here. I'm nervous. The championship. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wait a second. What is that? jersey what is that wait jersey? why am i not seeing this this is a disadvantage here what do you mean are you not seeing it i'm not seeing anything i see us three it's not i don't have a fourth window yours. how's that possible it's okay i can text you all the picture if you want me to how is that possible size how is this it. possible i have it i literally only Voice see silence. you two uh, i don't see the uh i don't see the show window okay right. i am pulling well. up my messages on my computer, which hopefully doesn't crash it. His right. computer's struggling a little uh, bit. He just, oh, Brody he gone? took it into his own hands. Do you see it now? Am I gone? No, no you're back. back. No, 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 I got nothing. Okay, once mm. messages... Right, I guess I'll just text it to me. I guess I'll look off yeah. of my text. Once messages pops up, I'll text it to you. But, you know, my computer I got a head is, start. Um, my computer's sucking wind today. Well, here's so what I'll tell you. This guy's wearing a I light blue wondering what's sweatsuit, going on um, but he's wearing a Michigan... It looks like a Michigan jersey. Yeah, I can see the one. M. It's a Michigan basketball jersey, number 21. Trash. Um, I don't know who that could be. There's been a lot of good Michigan basketball players. Um, number 21, Michigan? Probably yeah, like, someone. Probably some cheater like uh, Chris Weber or something. 
it's a newer jersey though by looks of it okay mm. here you go text message is about to come through finally so i don't know his form looks really Love good that. though even though his outfit isn't like just like although i will say his thumb is like way on the edge of that disc like that way is out. I, I noticed that when i looked at the picture the heck almost, this guy's got some drip going yeah, on with I, I, baby it's almost blue. off, uh, it's almost off the disc yeah the thumb position is interesting but like i like his everything else about castle his form in the background huh oh it's a franz wagner jersey that's kind of sick he's in the oh, league oh. um there's like a freaking uh there's a freaking castle in the background. Also, he's throwing super he downhill. See. Holy cow. Yeah. Look at the elevation change here. I I, I like this is a little scary. It looks like he's about to step on them. They're a little bit too long for my likings. It's tough to analyze, but I like his form. Who's going first? Uh, like Trevor, you can kick it off. Okay. I like these baby the blue first. pants. I'm gonna say this guy is MA1. MA1 from How Trevor, far? Brody. Also, look how far his like uh, webbing is between his pinky and his ring. Yeah, finger. for real, that's oh, crazy. I think that I'm might be just like that. the photo, kind of like a weird I photo glitch. AI. But... Would you say MA one? Yeah. Never guessed MA one. That's pretty good. I, I think that's. I mean, I don't think. I don't think he's MA three. So. I feel like MA two might be a little bit too low for this guy's drip. I don't think you're showing up to a course wearing this if you're MA two. I think you're showing up to the course wearing this if you're MA3 or MPO. Okay. And I don't think he's MA3, so I'm going MPO. <laughs> MPO for Brody. That is correct. He is MPO. Yeah, he's uh, this got is too much Guthrie grip. Guthrie Collins yeah. out of Grand yeah. Rapids, Michigan. The form yeah. was good enough for me to believe it. It was mostly the shoes that I was like, I'm not sure about. He has. Well, it's muddy. Look how muddy it is. He's it not is wearing muddy. nice shoes right now. It is muddy. He has 30 career events, 10 career wins, and over $5,000 in career earnings. And he is yeah. the head coach of a collegiate disc golf team. Yeah, this guy's a monster. <laughs> What's his rating? This guy's a, mo this guy's a monster. Brody's is it me will be divided or is it by Trevor? Trevor still guesses first here. He goes first both times? Okay. I'm going to say his rating. Also, this is like this is like a photo from a video, by the way. This yeah, is I think not it's a screenshot. The, yeah, the dimensions, because it also says crop at the top. The dimensions on this are, is not, this is from a video. I don't know if that, if that helps you at all, Trevor. I'm going to say, that doesn't help me. I'm going to say his okay, rating sorry. is nine. I, need, I just really, I need this. I need this. I can't go down big early. His rating is nine. Eighty-four. Dang it. That's what I was going to say that. 986. 986 for Brody. 984 oh, for Trevor. <laughs> That's actually a good hey, strategy because you have to divide it by two, so you can just kind of hang around. Wait, what did you say, oh, Brody? 980 what? Six. Six. 986? I wanted 984, but you said it. We're, just, we're locked in. So, on. Guthrie Collins is 1,000. Wow. Am I frozen? 1,006 rated. 1,006 rated. So, Trevor has 22 points. Brody with 10 monster. points round one. He's a monster. Yeah. The form should have, uh, you shouldn't have been questioning the form too much. It looked good because it is good. Damn. All right. Next picture up here, side guy. Do I need to leave go. and come back? What's the situation here? You're fine. I'll text you the picks. If I, you know what? I don't know. My computer is just like spinning wheels right now. So Why I'm probably going to leave and come back. Why I'm probably going to disappear any second here. You might have to leave Why and come I back. I'm gonna leave and come back real quick. He's gonna give, leave and give come Trevor, back. Give Trevor, give Trevor a few seconds to, to watch captain, it first. Captain technical difficulties over here. I might need to upgrade. I need. I might need to get a new computer. My <laughs> laptops, my laptop internet card or whatever is dead. This computer things, just things sucks. Things have been wind. rough for you. Apple Vision Pro. That's what I need. Beep, 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 beep. That would be sick, honestly. You're good, Brody. Okay. Yeah, we got a lefty. Man, lefty. Hold on. Kel Kelsey's coming back. Watch out. She doesn't I can tell you that much right now. Lefty. Um, Interesting that we're wearing like a, a Dallas uh, Stars hat and a Celtic shirt. Not a Celtic shirt. You might not be able to zoom in. It's an Optic Gaming shirt. I don't know when oh, they did a Boston Celtics collab, but it's sick. an Optic Gaming shirt. Yeah. Okay. But then they're definitely, on it. definitely wow. Texas based then. Um, Dynamic Yellow bag off to the side to there. This is Brody's guess first, by the way. Okay. Okay, this guy. I 
da, 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 da. Shout out to Spectacles, Team Spectacles always. Um, he looks pretty athletic, honestly. Like being able to get in that position, it's a pretty athletic position there. Uh, gosh, the only problem is with the age stuff. It's like, is he playing in age divisions or is he playing in... Oh, man. Hmm. I think... God, see, now I have to try to figure out how old this guy gets catted. It's a tough game. That's a tough game. I can't Give really me tell. Uh... I'm honestly... I'm very, very lost on this one. Very lost. Not a lot to go off. Of. Gosh dang it. Give me... M M A. Stuck on this one. Give me MA50. MA50. Wow. What? There's no I think way. This guy's got to be in his 20s, Brody. There's no way he's that old. <laughs> yeah, this guy is not even 40. <laughs> Wait, what? Give me, give me MA3, please. Are my, are my pixels not working right now? This guy looks like he's 50 years old. <laughs> I need another okay, photo. Well, you're my both pixels. Wrong. You're both wrong. He's an MPO, was the correct oh answer. Oh, my here. gosh. MPO. Uh, this is uh, Ethan Whitelaw. How old is this out cat? Of Canada. How is this cat? Based out of Canada. My my sincere apologies, but I don't have enough pixels. Maybe you need to text me the photo. You know my computer can't handle that, man. How dare you bring that up? He's based out of Canada. He has well, 10 now I feel really bad. events, three career wins, $168 in career earnings. What's his rating? What division was he in? MPO. He is a professional. Your All right, how, how old? I know this is tough, but how old does the girl in the back look? Does she look like she's 20? She's she blurry. doesn't. Probably she's like blurry, the, he's blurry. He's, he's blurry. He's not blurry. He's crystal clear. Yes, he is. Wi Fi problem, Brody. Apparently, I, know I don't issue. have my Ethernet cable. I would guess, I would put her at 40. 25. Oh my! Yeah, I don't know, man. This photo, uh, is, this photo's, this photo's whacked out. She's, she's blurry in the background. She could be in this photo. Give me, give me nine. I don't care. Give me nine. Give me nine eighty-eight. Nine eighty-eight for Brody. I don't. This this photo is out of out of give whack, me, man. I can't. I can't do anything with this. Give photo. me nine sixty-nine. Nine sixty-nine for Trevor, and the correct answer was nine sixty. Trevor within ten. Yes. There. Big time, big time swing there. Trevor takes the lead. We can bring up the third picture here. It's yeah, get get all, get me off this picture. This guy's gonna flame me. That, and that's fine. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here oh, we go. Oh, the idiots. This is. This the, cannot be a real throw. The he idios, cannot be throwing right now. The shade in the staged. snow. This is Trevor's Trevor's first guess here. This has to be a staged photo. This is not in the no, middle. His of foot a, is a off the ground, out. Brody. His foot is off the ground. That's not a stage this photo. Not... He's mid throw. There's a shadow underneath the that foot, foot. The foot being off the ground doesn't necessarily mean that it's. I mean, I can, I can lift staged. my foot. Right, but like if you were going to do a stage but, throw, you wouldn't lift your foot off the ground. You would just get. In I stance. would imagine. I think this is a real throw. Yeah. I want team real throw. But. Um, I mean, I mean I like the guy's the looking straight at the camera. He's looking straight at the camera. <laughs> he's one of those. I think he's one of those AMs that like really gets into turning their shoulder all the way and like kind of faces backwards and kind of skips into it. He's wearing the idios. He likes to sext and skip. We know that. Um, but are you really turning your shoulder all the way if your if your butt is backwards? Think about that. I don't know. You're not. Um, okay. So sorry, we're going down a I form said. thing. I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say again. Is it me first? Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna say MA three again. MA three for Trevor Brody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only join me, man. Join me. He's also a psychopath playing with that much snow on the ground. So well, that that's leads not, me to think that's just like how the northern states have to do it. Yeah, which game. are yeah. I mean. We can talk about that maybe on a different podcast, but what are you doing living in a place that snows that much? Come on. <laughs> um, Probably like we're born there, like the job there. Yeah, you know? I was I was also born in the mid Midwest, and I can tell you right now, the Midwest is not fun to live <laughs> right now. I can tell you that right now. Being born in Chicago and living my most of my childhood in Ohio. Um, good sports teams, though. Good sports teams. <sighs> 
I mean, are there people out there that hate beaches and sun as much as yeah. I hate snow and cold? There are people Probably. out there that like love their hometown and like want to like stay there. There's and also like people that there's definitely people that hate beaches and sun. Yeah, there are people that like the hate hometown. The hometown's not a good beaches. argument. Though. I know a lot it of people. Don't like like there's a there's a lot no, of no, no. people who probably if it were just like pick a spot on the map, yes, they might move somebody warmer. But some people don't have the circumstances to just uproot their lives, move yes, away from I family. Under, obviously, I understand that. Right. I'm saying though, if I if I could pick a perfect weather, I'm picking like, uh, or sorry, an extreme weather, I'm picking like give me. A beach day, a hundred degrees. No, yeah. Are there people picking, that are like you that's your extreme? perfect weather? What's the, no, extreme, like perfect, extreme. like an extreme. Oh. So a hundred degrees is extreme heat. What's extreme cold? It's gotta be like 10. like snow on the ground. So like sub thirty. So like is, if I'm just saying like, how how I like hate low, the cold. Are there people out there that hate the hot like that? I don't Probably. like. I do not like the weather when it gets above. Uh, when it gets like, like the humidity, the that's a good one. Well, the humidity. See, is like I, I'll take humidity over snow any day. I did I would not take snow over humidity. Yeah, I yeah, did not. So you mind... hate the humidity. Right. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say right. I hate the humidity. I just don't mind the snow. I didn't mind 100 degrees in Arizona, but 100 degrees yeah. here is like in 100 in cold. Arizona was nothing. Right. I think humidity is a good. I think that's what you have to add. You have to add the humidity compared to the the cold and the snow. The heat and the humidity versus the cold and the snow. All I know is like when I wake up and it's super humid outside, I don't have to like take out my you know credit card and try to peel off the ice on my uh, <laughs> windshield and, and have to deal here. with hypothermia. You just have to know um, how to. You know how to know how to. Dress, someone was, right? someone nice was late for work the other day because they were trying to get the ice off the windshield. And it I was somebody. Was. It was Robbie, and it's because he's not used to it. He's not used to it. From Alabama. If you know like how to live in the cold, exactly. It's the same way if you know exactly. how to live in the heat. Like if you are, I've got adapted, two pixels right now on my face. If you're adapted to it, it's not that bad. At all. What's this guy's division? Is I already said MA3. Brody. Yeah. MA3? Yeah, why not? Both wrong. He is an MA1. MA1, he has 33 career events. This is eight a stage career photo. Wins. He staged he us. based out of Ohio. He's a forehand Brian player, I think. Oh, Ohio. He could be a Buckeye. Let's go. Oh, H. No, you hate uh, Ohio. What is his rating? Trevor, I believe, is your answer first. MA1? Gosh. He's got a couple wins. No, I think yeah, it is me first. Um, oh gosh, and then one is such a tricky one. I'm gonna say this is a stage photo. I just can't get over that. Nine. He's got pranked. Forty-six. I'm forty-six. This guy, this guy pranked. This guy pranked us so freaking hard. Brody he pranked us so freaking hard. He's got to be like a nine twenty-eight. Nine thirty-two. Nine thirty-two. I like nine thirty-two more. Nine thirty-two for Brody. Okay. I'm going not with my gut. Correct answer here was nine forty-one. <laughs> oh, I want a heater. I'm uh, getting neither of y'all were far off there. Neither I'm on a were far heater off. right now. Smoked. All right, let's bring up the next picture here, Sai guy. And I got the hammer for this one. Oh, that's in the water. I mean, yeah. That, I mean, that's. That, that has shot to be the dirt. flippiest. <laughs> that has to be the <laughs> flippiest disc in the world, or that thing is in the is middle of the way. Is there another guy wearing idios, man? He is wearing idios. Yes. Oh my gosh! What Can I guess doing? where this guy's playing from? I'm gonna say the Northwest. I mean, it could really it could be any. That, yeah. It could be anywhere. It could no, be on I the think East he's Coast. The Northwest guy. Look at I think look, it's, how, look I think how many layers up, he has on the. I think it's Upper East Coast jacket. Um, uh, I mean, I can't. I can't get over how far this disc is going into the water. <laughs> no, dude, that's this guy. If you're, disc. if you're watching this show, you have to let me know in the comments where did this disc end up because yeah, there's a lot of high. I will be shocked if this. We don't know how hard he threw it though. He could have ripped that thing. Yeah, but well, look how the, I mean, the hole. Can, the hole's got to be like 200 <laughs> feet away. Camera perspective, man. That camera that's perspective. <laughs> it's got to be like a jump putt over this. Okay, thing. but what about this? Um, what if his release angle was just like. Like, what if that disc is actually on hyzer, but it's currently traveling more left to right than it looks? Like, it's not actually flying straight away from its body. It's going, like, it's more so like it he's pulling it. Thing. He's pulling it, it up like this, and it's coming upwards more on hyzer. Like, I don't think it's wouldn't actually. It be, wouldn't it be right of his body? It's on its way right of its body. Like, it hasn't gotten there yet. But I think it could It could be on that trajectory. I'm not saying it, it is. It could be. It could be. I don't think how that mathematically would work here. 
if the if the disc it's release like, was it's if like he released the disc 15 feet in front of him if he released the and disc from low and it's working its way to high on that angle it could be moving uh, in a slightly right he would direction. have to release the disc like five feet left of the t-pad for that that maybe. theory to work <laughs> maybe he did maybe it could also did. be a camera angle thing it's true i don't like camera angle things clearly the last guy i thought the guy was like 50 years old and you say he's 20. did we ever get an actual age of that guy how i have no idea how to get his age there's he'll not like a know. birthday thing on he'll there. Let you, he'll let no. you know. No. I'm. I. I. I think. I think. Obvious. Uh, give me MA two. MA two. I'm in shambles. I called a guy that's 20 years old 50. I'm. I'm living I'm in, in MA three right now. I'm going with MA three again. MA three. I am going to give both of y'all half points because the guy who tried to sign up for MA three, but MA three wasn't offered, so they bumped him to MA two, and that's his mm. only event he's ever played. Love that. So this rating could be event. anywhere. He's only ever played one event. It was in MA2. He oh, came this, in, this is in the water. 25th at uh, a BB oh, tier. This rating is, this is going to be the hardest one we've ever done because Wait, this rating. Where was he at? Where was uh, the oh, Northwest. At? Brody was right. Or Oregon. Oh, Woodburn, nice. Oregon. This could literally yeah. be Range jacket, anywhere from like 700 to 900. This rating. I'm just, we're just going to. Would y'all rather both be divided by half no, or just both just get nothing? No, just straight up. It's we the tied. same thing. I yeah, think it's straight, straight up. Yeah, straight up. What's his rating? I'm I glad I'm like, wait, Brody's how does he have a rating? One he he played, played one event. tournament. That's all you have to one do. One event. Oh, so this one event is what his rating is. <laughs> yeah. How That's he what performed I'm at this one tournament. Can you, tell me how many, can you tell me how many people are in the field? No, don't tell them. Uh, no, I would prefer not okay. to say. In the you field. took 25th though. There he couldn't be 25th. that many more than 25. I mean, Northwest. I'll tell you how many people were in the tournament. How people were in the tournament? There was 211 people in the tournament, and he yeah. came in 25th in MA2. There couldn't have been that no, many more people. Northwest uh, ratings are pretty inflated. <laughs> this um, is a very hard one. There, we could be 100 points off so easily. If you get I'm within going, if within like 20, I'll be so impressed. Uh, I mean, the fact that this, I mean, he, he took an eight on this hole, at least. <laughs> um, give me, give me, let's go, let's go eight, 28. Man, you're okay. right in my range there. You're right in my range. That's kind of what I liked. I'm I mean, go if this guy, lower. if he turns out to be, if he shot like a 900 rate. I'm going to go 808, me. Hunter. Can I have 808? Let's lock that in. 808 for Trevor. I'm going to be shocked. I think you could be close. I can't believe I kinda... anything. I'll tell you this: the closest, the closer of the two of you, is ninety-seven ratings points off. Oh, okay. Yeah, is he seven hundred? He's lower. Seven eleven was the yeah. rating that he came out of this with. Uh, now I his mean, buddy, a, his buddy did say, on this hole. I forget what his buddy said. <laughs> he, uh, but basically, he was saying this rating isn't really accurate. He just showed up, played off his first tournament, and that was that, and that's all he had. Uh, but happens. the picture, I think, just kind of lined up. Like, he could have got the 7-Eleven <laughs> off the picture because that thing was going OB across the water. Left. Uh, he he came in dead last at this tournament yeah. uh, and was, uh, it looks like, 51 strokes off of second to last after two rounds. Okay. So wow. Rough day out there. Rough day out there. The thing in one strokes? He was trying the to play is... MA3 or MA4. They didn't offer it. He was bumped up to a division he didn't want to be in. It was his first tournament. Hey, stuff hey, happens. Whatever, man. man. First he got, tournament. His buddy who submitted it did CC him on the email and got permission. For I've got good game. news for him. It only <laughs> goes up from here. Yeah. That's your good news. And yeah, that's good tournament. news for you. Don't throw a disc that much hyzer on a, on a, that on a hole news? that has a bunch of water left. That that's news? great news. Yeah. Uh, that's the... Great news. I don't know what to say. Oh, Dang, you only Hunter, played one tournament, so that I'm exhausted. You've only played one tournament, so you play one more, <laughs> and boom, and your rating go anywhere. Yeah, you basically We're in blank shambles. Slate. You basically We're have in shambles slate. over here. All right, last picture here. This is it. This is no, the we side. Have one more. This is the side the ship. I'm going in blind. Oh, not anymore. Not anymore. Bucket oh, hat. This guy just. I mean, he's oh, got but the, look way at the bag many, though. Way too many colors. Look at the bag. Way, though. way too many colors. Because everything me. about him, he's got the the chalk bag in one hand, in the off hand. That's like that's like a, that's some steez right there. I like the way he's lining up that shot. He's got some drip. I've never understood why we do that. What? The Dude, lining up. It's a visual, visual visualization thing. Like people are trying yeah, to visualize is. their shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The, this is interesting. The bag, though, is what's giving me, like, he's still somewhat Noob. new to the sport. 
Newbish he's still someone new this world, but he's he's picking it up quick though. He's picking Is it up he a quick. litter? Is he a litter? Yeah, the water bottle. You want to pick that, that up, buddy? That pick concerns that up? me. But there he's got a he's got a reusable hat. water bottle in his pouch though. He's got a reusable. Well, are water you bottle. A, are you considered a litter if you walk by litter and don't pick it uh, up? No, because we're all good litters. question. Oh, okay. Um, could be uh, could have fentanyl or whatever on it. It's true. Is this guy Pretty rocking a course? chain? I think he is. Is he yeah. a little chain yeah. on there? Little chain a little, action going, little on chain there. going on. I like. I bumps, like. Bumps it up a little I bit like for me. Guy. I'm gonna go M A two. M A two for Brody. It's Trevor. A really good guess, Brody. The really chain bumped guess. it up for me. I'm gonna just it's go crazy, out there. It's crazy. These colors. He I'm gonna has go. On the I shoes, like your guess socks. better, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say M A one. M A one for mm. Trevor. The correct answer was M A two. Yeah, I like M A two. So he's actually a new enter into M A two. He recently moved up. Towards the end of last season. That's exciting. Uh, he okay. was playing in MA3. He has eight career events, two career wins, based out of College Station, Texas. Ooh, oh, what's up, man? Let's go, uh, man. go Aggies. Rating. This one's for all the marbles here. A little Texas a Side season cat. one champion. Um, huh. Let's see here. This guy's going to be like right around... This guy's gonna be right around nine twelve. Okay. Mm, such a Trevor? good guess. Such a good guess. Uh, I the problem with that is like I can't really go that much further away without just saying something ridiculous. Like ultimately, that's fine. That's, that's, a, that's completely understandable. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Um, yeah, no, because he can't be much higher than that. He could be a little lower than that. He could know. be like in the eight eighties for, for intrigue, but not. for intrigue, and just because this could be, this could be what it is. I'll say like eight ninety four. All right, eight ninety four for Trevor. But you're probably right on. All right, maybe not though. Could be low. We're gonna do math at the end here. Things could get close because oh my gosh, he was rated nine thirty one. Making Ooh. Brody Whoa. only nine point five points off Dude, after his adjustment, okay. and Trevor thirty seven points off. All the people that were like that were ta- saying it was crazy to be playing. I feel um, like that should be MA one. No? Yeah, all he's four points 30? away from the cut. He's four points away. From yeah, the cut. all the people okay. that were like, "You're playing. You're you're in your nine thirties. You're playing MA two. Like you're a sandbagger. Like, this guy was just in wreck." Yeah, to be fair, though, when you're quick. that new, your rating can jump like 40 points. Oh, you can move up so fast. Yeah. Trevor has a total points of 170. Is it going to be that, that, uh, that one guy that has a 700 rated, he could be 850 rated by his next round. It's true. Goes out, throws a couple, you know, throws a first hole ace. Who Trevor, knows what could happen? First hole ace. Well, if he does and that, it's going down. So Trevor's 170. Mm. Brody comes in at 173.5. Trevor's oh, the champion. Oh decided by only three and a half points wow. when it was all said and done. <laughs> Trevor's a season well one done. champion. Dang, well dude. done. I, I'm really, honestly, like, the, ac- the accolade is cool, but I am very excited about the bonus that comes with it. 10 That's Gs. Great point. 50 Gs, Dana. I just have to uh, worry about seeing this guy now. That's all I'm going to be thinking about. That's looking rent-free this- in your head a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, it happens, I know. man. I, well, you know, blurry computer. The fact that uh, everyone jumped on. on me that there's no shot this guy is 50 years old. I, you I, know, I I'll admit I stared at the picture quite a long time trying to decide if I your can't. claim was ridiculous or founded. I can understand it. I can understand it. I have multiple um, pictures, so I. C- I'm can an you show me another advantage. photo? Can we give this guy? You can go to his. Uh, I'll text you his PGA link, and you can find another picture of him. Or send it to Silas so he can pull it up because I, uh, we got to give this guy justice. I think <laughs> it was a bad photo. Hunter can't send anything right now. This I think it was a bad photo. Uh, yeah, there's no way for me to. Hey do man, when you're here. in the middle of a huck face, like I'll, all bets I'll are off. I'll take a picture man. with my phone of the picture on my computer and then send it to you. I want to do it. We need to do a segment on one of these shows show called it Huck to Face your of the Week, and it's just who. Oh, I guess I can do that too. Yeah, just show yeah, that'll it to be, your that'll be super crystal clear. Oh, this guy looks. Yeah, this that guy is a lot 20. better. Though. This guy looks like he's twenty four years old. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah those, so I had those, some. I had some point those, of reference. That other face. photo looks like he has a filter on. It's, he it looks like mid, he has he a Snapchat. Mid-hook. Bro, mid-hook, I want to you know, see you, somebody. Like, your head, stuff I, yeah, I want to see somebody do the Snapchat filter. Yeah, and submit that. That's funny. Like a little baby face. All right, this first topic comes from Colton Sparks. He said. In theory, 
Couldn't I sign up for a PDGA tournament under someone else's name and PDGA number? What is stopping me from going to a state that I would not be recognized, playing in a tournament using my local rival's PDGA number in order to tank his rating? Something to be done about this. <laughs> Literally nothing is stopping you, and you would get away with it until that person would eventually appeal to the PDGA and yeah, probably you can, get to prove you their can, identity. You can submit to the PDGA like, hey, like I've had random rounds show up on my account before and be like hey that wasn't me and really like, and, yeah wait and you, what that's you happened send an email to the pdga and it was like the td put in the wrong pdga number so it was like it was oh, supposed to be so like the person next to me like seven seven now what if that person hit. fired what if that person shot fire round would you have sent in saying keep hey it that in. wasn't me i'm not even keeping that this no, is when I'm I was in right? hip now. If if it's now and someone shoots a 1050 round as Hunter Thomas, yeah, that's, yeah. that's that. I'm keeping that <laughs> all day long. This is when I was in college long. and I like wanted. I was I cared a lot about my stats. And my PGA. anything 950 and up, we're keeping guys. Yeah, you are no, more than welcome I to use that. my name. It's expired right now, but if you want to renew it and use it, see that's, um, that's I didn't get accepted to the thinking. Brody Smith PDGA charity uh, membership renewal, so I, I didn't get accepted this year. No, but I didn't do that this year. Say, I'm, did I'm, you do that this year? No, because the PGA and me aren't, aren't really tight anymore. So uh, um, you could like buy someone a tour card. <laughs> they also they also <laughs> just like they also just kicked out UDISC, which I, I don't understand that at all. But um I thought this was gonna go the other route. I thought this was gonna be like, hey, I need help passing my LSATs. I need help passing my SATs. I need help passing this test go play this tournament for me yeah. and shoot me a good score. And here's 50 bucks. Like I thought that was going to be that way. Not, not the tanking way. I have genuinely I think, considered I think the other way could be a, a, da a more dangerous thing because now I'm not, I'm not reaching out to the PGA saying, Hey, yeah. that wasn't me. I'm the one that's telling someone to go out there and shoot this fire around for me. Yeah. Well, here's what Hey, what does that really help you? Like if Dude, I had you show up and play as Hunter Thomas. Street cred. What the heck? I can get a Lone Star sponsorship. What the heck is wrong with you? Ratings are all that matters. Well, Here's a, I mean, ratings all that matters. At, at that point, <laughs> the PDGA doesn't really care because it's like the rating no. is just for you. And if like you're going to go use that and then a team's going to look and be like, well, hey, the guy's 10-10 rated. Yeah. I mean, they, they should no, do the, a little the more. The real homework. strategy is you create a second account for yourself. That would be wild. And you only play, like, one account, you just, you'll play any random tournament. But the other account is reserved for tournaments you know are going to have better ratings. And you know they're at courses you're better at. So you have, like, your Smurf account and then your main account. So you're like, <laughs> if I'm going to play some local tournament with a bunch of, like, 920 guys, I'm not breaking out my premium account. Um, it also, I'm pretty get, sure all of this will get you banned from the PDGA. Nobody's if ever found out. Ever but. gonna? I might. What am I gonna get a PDGA <laughs> audit? Like what? I don't know. I was just like saying. If, I was just. I was just informing the people at home. I like promise if you. you hear about your you're PDGA not gonna account, get caught. Don't try this. No, you get you're caught, not gonna you're get. Probably you're not gonna get caught. You're not. And the I was PDGA, just telling the people at home in case they. Would, you can join my. It. You can join the TDGA, and we're gonna have our own memberships, <laughs> and they're only gonna be two dollars for the whole year. They get you nothing, but hey. No, you get a number. You get a lifetime number. Oh. Yeah, Please. you get a number. TDGA number for life. Two dollars for life, or, or two dollar for for the year. But you get your number for your number is reserved for life. Nice. And then every once in a while, we'll have like maybe a potluck. Okay. Uh, this next one was submitted anonymously. He said, "Curious as to how you would have handled this situation." Here we go. I'm playing in my second ever tournament at my home course. I signed up for MA4 expecting to win, as this is a course I play multiple times a week. I played very well the first round, finishing at six under par. I was shocked after checking scores to see that someone shot seven under. Upon looking at their scorecard, something caught my eye. They got a two on hole 14, a hole that I've never even seen birdied. It's roughly 400 feet uphill with OB right and long and a Mando right halfway up the fairway. There's also a huge barn-type building on the right that you either have to miss or throw over. No one in MA4 should be able to make this throw. Still to this day, I've never seen it birdied in person. For a little context, this course has a few drop zones. On this hole, there's a drop zone at the Mando Tree, which is roughly 150 feet from the hole. In past tournaments, drop zones have been used as amp tees. I clarified before the tournament that all divisions were using normal tees. I asked around and found out that this card had teed off from the drop zone, therefore making this a misplay. Yep. I knew the guys had, that had done it and didn't want to come off as a jerk in my second ever tournament. As we were all fairly new, I could see how they would make the mistake because I don't remember it really being mentioned in the players' meeting. I talked to the TD, and he asked which, what I thought should be done. Well, that's stupid. Someone standing near him <laughs> suggested that they get a misplay penalty, which I think is two strokes. I told him I didn't want to seem mean. I'm aware that the TD should have done this, and my opinion shouldn't matter. I suggested he just lets them replay the hole from the right tee and call it fair. So that's what he did. They all took a par, and I ended up winning in a playoff. 
I feel like MA4 is more about learning the game and having fun. I know rules are rules, but it didn't hurt anyone as no one below them would have gained anything from it either. Hey, I mean, I don't care. Here, here's what, well, first of all, the TD should have just <laughs> should have just done it. Like you, there's no way the TD should have been like, "Hey, you, that's in the heat of this competition. Um, what would you like to do?" Like that's just irresponsible. But also, like, hey, yeah, I mean, as long as nobody was upset, guys. If we're in MA4, you know, let's just all have fun. Let's learn the game. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Let's that's like I remember. Let's learn the game. I, let's have fun. If no no hard feelings, then that's great. Successful event. No, I think that's all of it's really on the TD because a the TD is required by the PDGA to make that call and give yeah, a misplay. The TD uh, kind of clammed up there on you. B, it also sounds like it's the TD's fault for not making it clear which T's everyone were playing and the players beating. So also, also the TD's fault. So in general, just TD was in the wrong here a bunch. But it, it sounds like when I was in, I think it was middle school, I forget what I did, but I got in trouble at some point. And there was like another student involved and I went to the principal's office and I like sat down and the principal was like going on and on. And like, I didn't think whatever I had done was a big deal. I can't remember for the life of me what it was. But I, I remember thinking like, this isn't a big deal. The principal's going to talk to me, send me back to class. And then the principal like said something about like possibly missing the basketball game tomorrow. I was like, why would I miss a basketball game? And he's like, well, if you're suspended, you can't play in a game. I was like, suspended? Why, why would I get suspended? He's like, well, I, I talked to the other student and it's up to them. Like if they... If they feel like you should be suspended, then we're gonna suspend Press you. Press charges. If, if not, then you know you're 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 fine <laughs> to come back. And I was like, "You're the principal. Why?" So I called my parents because I was like, "I don't know what I'm supposed to do here." And so my parents called the, the principal and were like, "Is Hunter telling the truth or he's lying?" And the principal was like, "No, yeah, we're gonna leave it up to the the kids that is and their parents wild. as to like, will he, if he'll be suspended tomorrow." And luckily, the the kid was like a friend of mine, and was like, "No, like he should not be suspended over this." And so I didn't get suspended. What did you do? But it sounds like you exactly, I don't remember. Yeah, right, dude. You better spill. Yeah, it sounds like you bullied someone. Is what it yeah, sounds like. Hunter it must bully, have been because I mean, there's another kid involved. I was like a sixth grader, but that's no, wild. The, no, this happened. Yeah, that happened they, to me. It sounds exactly like that. Where In I just like walked to the principal, and they were just like, "Well, it's up to the other person." Bro, whatever, why do, whatever happens, happens. Why did they do that? In second grade, I my second grade teacher was awesome. Like. I was like very close to my Ms. second Whipple. grade teacher. Uh, her name was, uh, I won't drop the name because I don't want this to reflect on her. Um, That's fair. That's but fair. Smart move. she, one time, this kid who was like a known troublemaker in our class wrecked our art project that we had going. This is second grade, keep in mind. So we are 10 year olds. Um, not even, no, not even 10 year olds. We're like seven year olds. Um, this kid wrecked our art, and he, it was like me and my buddy's art projects got wrecked by this kid. Um, and she literally asked us, what do you think would be a suitable punishment for him? And what we said was that, and this is just funny because it's second grade, but what we ended up saying and what actually flew, and to be fair, was a totally fair punishment. We said he should be banned from the Legos during indoor recess if we had indoor recess because he like hoarded them, loved them. <laughs> Like, what a power trip, though. We're in second grade. And, like, that's what happened. And I don't think I've ever processed that. Like, why did she ask us we should, that? I'm going to start doing that in the office. Whenever what something you, happens, I'm What are you guys doing? Person, You're like, the authority. We're stupid kids. I'm going to go to the other person and be like, so, so Silas, what do you think Trevor's punishment should be? Like, that? never in my wildest <laughs> dreams. Like, I'm not my second kid. I would never... Like, ask my older kid, like, what do you think their punishment should be? Like, you are, they are the ones that were wrong. They're going to dish out something so unjust. And so, un <laughs> like, you know what? I would, if my mom said that to me about my little brother, I would have had him shipped off somewhere. Like, it is, yeah, maybe it's it's crazy. I think like, have to go to boarding school. I think it's the only way to Yeah, learn. like, you need to, you need to whip him. Like, what? <laughs> it's a good, yeah, it's a good vetting mechanism because if you're like, yeah, I think you just chop his arm maybe off. It's it's like, maybe it's a test. Maybe, maybe. Maybe we're this being kid's tested. A psycho. We need to we need to send this kid into some help. Maybe it's a test. Like the teachers, like thinking, like let's see, just like where their heads are at. Like are they gonna are they the type yeah. of responsible kids are, are gonna give a reasonable person? punishment, or are they gonna be like they should be hung from their thumbs outside? Exactly. Like what's just the vetting process? Frozen flagpole. That's great. That's what you're doing as a TD when you make these MA4 players make it's a exactly decision. The same. It's yeah. second grade Legos all over again. This next one was, I was submitted. more Lincoln Logs, anyways. I was, a little more <laughs> yeah. I was submitted. This next one was submitted from Grant, the Tour Life editor. Uh, oh, he let's said, go. He Tour said, Life? I have a PDGA Ooh. number and have played one doubles tournament. It went terribly for me, but my doubles partner crushed and got us fifth place and $70 each. First off, how do we get that much money from fifth place at a small tournament? Secondly, do you think I need to play in tournaments to get better, or can you get to like MA1 level or like a thousand rated having never played in a tournament? 
Uh, I don't know about a thousand. Rate. Well, you de- first of all, you definitely can. You can do those things. You are going to do much better in tournaments if you play a lot of tournaments because the tournament experience is just a little different. But the part there's it's the parts of your game that you're working on. Like you're just throwing and putting, like in that kind of thing. Like that you can do outside of a tournament. But like the actual like managing pressure and nerves and like that kind of thing, and that's that's what you have to do in the tournaments. But yeah, you can get very wise, good. You, get, you can get really good not playing in any tournaments, though. You absolutely can. Yeah. But it's it's a fast way to get good, for sure. Hunter, we gotta make money right. in doubles tournaments. We should. Well, we we have we have to win something to get money. We can't I think play, we, claim technicalities at PDJ. It would be a really funny video, though. We we bring out Connor or Silas to film us, and like we put our own money on the table to like try and win it back, and like we're just like arguing with each other about trying to make cash so we can win our money back. Like it'd be really funny. Hey, I'm I'm always down to play. I'm gonna have to we look. Should, I'm gonna, we should. We need to reach out to the PGA, get our amateur status back, and try to qualify for U.S. doubles. I know, dude. We totally could get it back. We never play. We need to. No, we need to try and qualify for U.S. I haven't cashed in like I don't, I don't even know. I haven't cashed in like a year or two. We need to ask. Maybe we I'm need to look. I'm 937 rated right now. We need like a somebody. Well, we had, we know Heinold. I'm saying we need somebody from the PDJ to like help us out a little bit. Like, where are the qualifiers going to be this year? Like, help me. You guys need to let us know how to get into this doubles game because, like, we need to get into the game. I want to be playing at USDGC doubles this year. Yeah, that'd be electric. Uh, this final one was submitted from Guthrie Collins, who was the thousand rated guy in the Guess the Rating game. Um, and like I said, he was a coach of a university team, and he has a situation that he wanted to bring up and get our thoughts on it. Okay. He said, I had the pleasure of coaching the Houghton University disc golf team. I still have no idea how to pronounce it's Houghton. School. I keep it. Houghton. The yeah. Houghton University disc golf team for the past two it. years. At Nationals last year, we found ourselves leading the tournament after day one and then solo second after day two. They had a On crazy three, round. They did. On day three, we transitioned to the Gorge course, and we were playing on lead card with Clemson. Both teams were struggling on this layout and were falling down the leaderboard. We arrived at hole 12, which is a downhill par 5. We were in the middle of the fairway after the drive. Our first player stepped up and ripped a full flex to about 50 feet, which gave us an eagle look. After the shot landed, a Clemson player walked up to us and called a footfall. If you remember the weather last year, it was about 40 degrees and rainy the entire day. So bad. The whole Clemson team was huddled about 60 feet away from us under some umbrellas during the throw, and I could not believe the call. As it was so wet, our player's footprint was still visible behind the disc, and it was obviously <laughs> not a footfall. I pointed this out to the Clemson team, and they sided with their team captain, who was adamant that it was a footfall. I called the TD immediately, and we had a conversation. My argument was that, one, it obviously was not a footfall because of the footprint evidence, and two, can a member of the same team even second a call Shouldn't and lead be to doubles? Able to. The head PDJ official came out to our group and settled the debate. Apparently, if a member on the same team seconds a call, it stands. So I could stupid. not believe this. I think this is a huge oversight in the collegiate doubles format. What are y'all's thoughts on this? I had thought how many, fourth place. how many people are on the card? Like four, on four each. teams? There's four Eight. on each team. There's two teams on the card, four on each team. Wait, what? So that's Hold really on. the problem. You have eight total people on so, the card. So how do you how do you have someone else second it that's not on that that's team? What I'm saying. It's like, you can't really second it because, like, it, they shouldn't really be able to be seconded from the same team because that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But then it also, like, is never going to get well, seconded you're gonna have from the other from team. This other t- yeah. the team that's uh, being called on. You really are never. Yeah, they got to figure something out with that. You got to have an official on, like, those lead cards, I guess, because, yeah, nobody's ever going to call anything. Which, like, it sounds like that footfall call was ridiculous anyways. Like, I've always said, if you call a footfall in a situation like that. That day sucked, too. Where, there yeah, should like, have been no footfalls called yeah, you're, that day You're a ridiculous person because, like, unless you see they, they gained an, a serious advantage from the throw, like, what are you doing? Um, But, yeah, that is a, no, that is an oversight. I guess the weird part there. is, like, a shot like this, which it sounds like was, a, like, a phenomenal shot that couldn't be replicated is, like, a completely different situation than, like, because you're you're playing doubles, so like if one person makes a score or a mistake or cheats some way, shape, or form, you can still play the other person's shot. Because as long as that person threw a legal shot, that's still in play. So True. like if it's a shot where like you know you have a forty foot putt and the first guy step putts and foot falls and they call foot fault, it's like okay that's fine. You don't have a stroke. It's just the second guy can't foot fault. You just can't take the first guy's shot. So I think right. a lot of times just like the school the like rules don't matter nearly as much in doubles because both people would have to blatantly mess up the rule. So I think that's why it probably hasn't come up nearly as much, but like, yeah, that's the easiest way to cheat in collegiate disc golf ever. 
It's yeah, just like, like every every throw, football, football I second, I third, I fourth. Yeah, the whole team like, just right down the what line. What do you do about it? Like, that's brutal. Yeah, I, that's definitely got to be looked into. I think you should have probably fought them. Yeah, I actually, that's. Great, I think you should have engaged in physical combat with them. You should have. It would have grown the sport because, like, think of that could have ended up. We would have got it on camera. That, that could have yeah. ended up all over the place. It would have been good for us. We needed it. We were really cold and wet. Yeah, it would have got us some heat. We could have got in there and broke the fight up. Yeah, I would have got, got in the mix. I would have helped you out. Was the gorge the course we played? Yeah, yeah the gorge would y'all played. Super hard. I'm trying to think of what hole that is. 12 is the one. If it's a downhill oh, par we five, played that as a par. Be, we played that as a par four. It's like from way up top goes down. Yeah, and like the, the backups on the hole hill. were so crazy. Oh yeah, we gosh. played. That was a par four. That was a par four for Oof. us. Okay, that's why I was confused. I was like, par five downhill. Yeah, no, that was a par four for y'all. Yeah. yeah. It's a nasty day out there, but no, yeah, the collegiate rules—they definitely need to look into that because that's a, that's a rough one. Yeah, that's weird. That's very weird. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. That is it for the off season. The off season is over, which means debate night is back next week. I cannot wait. You're not going to want to miss out on it. We are super excited to be back. Have disc golf to talk about. The season is right around the corner. All Star Weekend next week. The Chess.com Invitational the week after, and we're in the full swing of things. So. Just like that, you blink and it's over. Hard to believe it's already time for the Disc Golf Pro Tour season again, but it is. So thank you all so much for hanging out with us this off season. We will start this show right back up at the end of the season next year to help you get through yet another off season. Who's this? Oh, uh, oh. I, uh, I don't know if we're still live, but do we have a starting lineup for next yeah. week set? Not set yet. Not set. All right. Tune in to figure it out. Then. Yeah, you All can right, tune in see. to see you next week. All right.